You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 222. And today, let's discover the common path to uncommon success. You ready for this? Let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Get ready to ramp up your revenue, amplify your impact, and make your mark in the world. This is the show for experts, thought leaders, and service professionals who want to shatter their limits and achieve that next level. You're going to find out from other experts and influencers how they made it. Now, let's get amplified. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It's your host, Melanie Benson, authority amplifier for expertpreneurs around the globe who are ready to stop being invisible and start being a highly paid expert. Today, I have an exciting guest. I am so jazzed to share this conversation with you. One of the icons in the podcasting industry joins me on the other side of the mic to talk about the common path to uncommon success. Before we dig in and I bring that conversation to you, I got to share with you a resource that I think is part of your path to uncommon levels of success. And that is having tools in your toolbox to create revenue on demand. Now, I'm not talking about how do you make money in your business? I'm talking about how do you boost up the revenue when a client leaves you unexpectedly, when you're trying to make a big goal financially and you need a little extra push, having tools in your toolbox that can ramp up and accelerate your cash flow on demand. Every entrepreneur needs to have this tool in their toolbox. So head over to yourrevenuerush.com, download the free toolkit, and put one of these into action in the next 30 days. Then come tell me how quickly it's working for you. Again, that's yourrevenuerush.com. Now let me introduce you to my guest today. Welcome back, Amplifiers. I'm so excited to talk with a friend of mine today about the common path to uncommon success. This man needs a little introduction, but let me do him justice. I'm introducing you today to John Lee Dumas. He's the founder and host of the award-winning podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire. With over 100 million listens of his 3,000 plus episodes, JLD has turned Entrepreneurs on Fire into a media empire that generates over a million listens every month and seven figures of net annual revenue eight years in a row, my friends. Seven figures of net annual revenue. That's not gross, that's net. His first traditionally published book, The Common Path to Uncommon Success, is available right now in pre-order as we're airing this episode and has some amazing bonuses with it. I'm going to tell you how to get it right now at uncommonsuccessbook.com, but you're going to want to listen to this episode and hear all about what's in store. John, I'm so excited to talk with you today, and congratulations on the book, my friend. Oh, thank you, Melanie. It's always great chatting with you. This was a labor of love. I mean, this puppy took me 480 hours to write 71,000 words, 273 pages. I wrote every word myself. And now I'm just so excited for it to be on the world. I know, I know. And you have been podcasting. You're like one of the original pioneers of the hot podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire. So just a little history. I know you remember this, but you approached me right like in the first... I think it was like the first six to eight months of your uh, podcast before it had really gained a lot of traction. And I was like, sure, I'll do it. Like, it sounds like an awesome podcast. (laughs) And later I'm like, so glad I did the podcast. It has been such a great visibility uh, opportunity for me. And I know it's been a great platform for you. Can, before we get into the book, can we just take a peek back at like, what, possessed you to make this huge shift in your life and start a podcast in the beginning? I went through six years of struggle, like real struggle. I mean, I was an officer in the U.S. Army from 22 to 26 years old, served 13 months of a tour of duty in Iraq as a tank commander in charge of four tanks and 16 men. And, you know, that was a very intense um, and, you know, 
you know, prideful experience. I mean, I looked back on my four years of service, you know, I, I accomplished a lot and I learned a lot and I did a lot. And then I kind of went into the six years from, you know, 26 to 32 years old, where just like nothing kind of felt right because like everything was so like less intense than my four years of, of, of service in the army. And, you know, in hindsight, I was dealing with PTSD and depression and things along those lines. And it turned into like these six years of struggle where, you know, I tried law school, dropped out, corporate finance, I quit, commercial residential real estate, like nothing was working for me. And it really took me to 32 years old, you know, again, after six years of struggling to really ask myself the question, like, what am I missing? And not having the answer. So I started just consuming content, specifically like reading books, listening to audio books. And it led me to a, a quote that I read in one of those books from Albert Einstein, which literally reached out of the page and like slapped me in the face, which was try not to be a person of success, but rather a person of value. And I was like, wait a second, I've literally just been chasing success and trying to be a success for six years now, you know, failing and unhappy and unfulfilled. And I haven't even thought about becoming a person of value. Like, what does that even mean? And of course I haven't been doing it because I don't even know what that means. And in that moment, I just committed, even though I didn't know what that was gonna look like, I was just committed to the idea of for the first time in my life, becoming a person of real value. And that just planted the seed. I didn't know what was going to come. But three months later, I said, hey, I wish there was a daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. I would listen to that show. And it didn't exist. So I said, why not be the change you want to see in the world? To quote Gandhi here. And I hired a mentor, Jamie Masters, a successful business podcast coach. And I said, hey, teach me how to become a successful business podcast host. And I launched the first daily podcast interviewing the world's most successful entrepreneurs. And here you and I are, 3,000 episodes later, 100 million listens later, 1.4 million monthly listens currently. And uh, it's been quite the journey. Yeah, I bet. Well, you are a pioneer for many of us. A, uh, a you know, we, we all aspire to have the level of impact you're having. So thanks for leading the charge there. And now you're channeling all of this extraordinary life and business uh, wisdom into your book. You know, let's take a step back because you and I, we've been in the online business a while now. Uh, I, I'm actually 21 years this year. So uh, I've seen a lot of uh, movement in how people are showing up online. And you you talk about something that's really struck me. And that's this idea that we are being lied to by a lot of the experts in the online business world. And I'm I'm really curious how that is manifesting for you. How are you seeing this lie that's perpetuating in, in the online business world? There are fantastic experts out there that are sharing unbelievable, great value in this world. I've had the pleasure of interviewing over 3,000 of them and seeing you know, the joy and the knowledge and the value that they're sharing with the world. And then there is another sect of people <clears throat> who... I like to say are the so-called experts who, you know, unfortunately are sharing something different than just the value that I'm seeing, you know, the successful and wonderful entrepreneurs out there and experts are sharing. And a red flag is when you, you hear stuff like, you know, listen, the path to success, it's hidden or it's a secret path or it's complicated or, you know, only certain people will ever, you know, be able to achieve this level of success. But here's the key, you know, that I have for $1,997.97. And listen, I'm all about generating revenue. I've been publishing my income reports for 91 months in a row, $100,000 net profit or more for 91 months. You need to make money and generate revenue as a business owner. But I think there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And I've identified by interviewing 3,000 successful entrepreneurs and then running my own multi-million dollar successful media empire for eight years in a row now that the path to your version of of uncommon success it's a common path it's a very common path in fact when i interviewed these three thousand successful entrepreneurs i was able to boil down the commonalities that we all share and we are the successful entrepreneurs we share 17 core foundational principles 
And I took those core foundational principles and I put them into a 17 step, step by step chronological roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment. And that's why I call this book the common path to uncommon success, not the complicated path or the, co- or the hidden path of the secret path. This is the common path to uncommon success. And that's what I want for people. That's what I really want people to understand is that it is a common path. Now, Melanie, you've been in this game for 21 years. People need to understand that common does not mean easy. It is a hard path. If you are not willing to work hard and to put in the hard work that it takes to become an uncommon success, don't buy this book. Don't start this journey. Do not pass go. Do not collect $100. Don't. But one thing I want to let you know is, you know, you need to realize that there's multiple things that are hard in this world. Like it is hard to run a successful business. It was hard to launch this business, to grow this business, to monetize this business. It was hard work. Melanie has worked hard in her life. Every successful entrepreneur that I've interviewed has worked hard. But you know what else is hard? It's hard being broke. Like it's hard living paycheck to paycheck. It's hard waking up every single day unfulfilled, unmotivated, disappointed in yourself because you're not achieving what you know you're capable of doing, which by the way, I lived for six years those six years of struggle that I mentioned. And at 32, I came to a fork in the road and I said, do I go left or do I go right? The left path, it's a hard choice because it's building my dream business. But the right path is also a hard choice, continuing to be broke, to be unhappy, to be unfulfilled and depressed. So what did I do? I chose my hard. And I believe everybody watching and listening to this can as well. Mm, I love that line, you chose your hard. Yeah, it's almost like we get to choose which, which, uh, what are we going to get at the outcome of the hard that we're choosing? And I love what I get every day. Like I wouldn't change my hard for anything. Well, I wouldn't mind it being a little easier some days, right? <laughs> it gets easier. That's the thing. I mean, it does. I'm a big believer in like we go through seasons. Like the first season of my business was the hardest by a long shot because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a name. I didn't have a brand. I had to learn so much. Like season one of my business, let's say years one through three, it was hard. Seasons four through six, hey, I was still working hard, but it was definitely a lot easier. I had a team, had understanding, money was rolling in. It just wasn't as hard. Season three right now, you know, where I'm at, it's like, I work five days per month. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. That's not super hard, um, working five days per month. Now, those five days, I am working all day. I mean, those are busy, busy days. And I've really dialed it in and drilled it down. But the other 25 days per month, I'm doing other things. Like, what do I want to do? I'm working on my health, my, my wellness. I'm traveling the world. I'm doing other fun things like playing pickleball. I mean, like, you know, that's the business I'm at now. And so your business can and will go through seasons, But it's all dependent on like really identifying, and this is key, like identifying, like what does uncommon success mean to you? I mean, Melanie, my business has been generating between two and $3 million for eight years. Some people would be like, well, why aren't you making 10 million by now? Like you've been doing this forever. And I'm like, because I'm not willing to trade working five times harder for three times more money. I don't want to be running a team that's 20 people or 50 people. Like some people want that and good for them. You should Go get your uncommon success. I have three virtual assistants that work 40 hours a week, $4,000 of total salary, you know, that that my business runs on. And that's the kind of business I want to run. That's the kind of team that I want. That's my version of uncommon success. But the sad thing is most people never even take a second to sit down and identify what their version of success is. So they're running a race. They don't even know what, what destination they're running to. They're just running and it never stops for some people. I totally agree. Start with the end in mind and it makes the choices you just, or the decisions you make much more effective. You know, I think we both know that a lot of entrepreneurs get into this game and then totally fail. Uh, Having interviewed so many people and coached uh, probably just as many, what do you think is contributing to such a high rate of failure? One thing they're not identifying their own personal big idea in this world. Mm -hmm. 
they're seeing Melanie and the success that she's having doing X and this person having success doing Y and me having success doing Z. And individuals and entrepreneurs who are failing at a high rate, they're just launching these weak, pale imitations of successful entrepreneurs. And then they're surprised that they're not having that type of success. Well, of course you're not, because that is Melanie's big idea. This is Melanie's zone of fire. You have a zone of fire. You have a big idea. It's time to sit down and maybe for the first time in your life, actually identify what that big idea is. Like that's step numero uno. That's the process you need to be implementing within your life. Most people, Melanie, to be dramatic for a second, are going to die never even having identified what their big idea is. And that's sad because, I mean, imagine like not e even ever taking the time. And it's not like it's a month or a year process. It's sitting down. And in the course of one day, you can uncover what your big idea is. It's not that hard. And to think that some people will never do that just because of lack of sitting down one time and doing it, it's really sad, but it's there for people. And obviously people that consume your content are action takers and are going to do that or have already done things similar to that. But, you know, to think that so many people will never do that, like, it's sad. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, especially when you know, like, it takes just a little bit of effort to carve out that time, but has such a huge impact at the end to have that it level of clarity. Your life. Like, it literally changes the trajectory of your life. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm really curious about this idea of a big idea, this idea of a big idea, right? Okay, <laughs> can I use idea anymore in one sentence? <laughs> um, what? Like, could we have a big idea and that be enough to be successful? Or do you think, I know you've got 17 steps in your roadmap, but what else do we need to make that big idea powerful enough to succeed? No, it's a great question because that's where most people do fail, to be honest, is like the ones that actually take the step to identify their big idea. They're just like, okay, sweet. I've got my big idea. Now I'm off to the races. There's a reason why it's the 17 step roadmap to, f to financial freedom and fulfillment, not the one step roadmap of identifying your big idea. Because here's the problem, Melanie, is people will be like, oh, I've identified my big idea. Well, guess what? And I mean this genuinely, like your big idea, it's a really good idea. Other people have your big idea as well, and they are currently crushing it with your big idea which is fantastic in one hand, because that's proof of concept that validates your big idea. But on the other hand, you will be like a lamb being led to slaughter. If you just jump in, you know, blindly into that one vague, broad, big idea that you have against all this entrenched competition, you will make it. So what you need to do is move on to step two, again, of 17 steps. So there's still obviously a lot following this, but step two is discovering your niche. That means like actually seeing what your big idea is and then finding a void that exists within your big idea, finding an opportunity that's not being served within your big idea, find, finding an, a, a hole that needs to be filled, finding a problem that's not being solved within your big idea. And there's hundreds of them. You just need to find the one that you can serve better than anybody else. And so like to give you a real world example, like my big idea, I want to start a podcast back in 2012 because I think podcasting is awesome. Okay. Thousands and thousands of podcasts. I get slaughtered like a little lamb. Let me niche down. I want to discover my niche. Oh, business podcasts. Okay. There's hundreds. Um, I'm still getting slaughtered like a little lamb. Okay. Let me niche down a third time. Oh, what about business podcasts that interview entrepreneurs? Oh, there's seven, seven of them. Do I want to be the eighth best podcast that interviews entrepreneurs in the business space? No, do not. So how can I niche down a fourth time? And I thought about it and I said, well, what's missing in the business podcast space of those people that are interviewing entrepreneurs or what's a problem or something that I think is like wrong or like missing. And I said, well, all these podcasts, they all have the same release schedule. They're, they're once a week. And I find myself complaining that I'm having to wait seven days for the next episode. So what if I solved that problem and became the first daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs so that what I wanted was to wake up every morning and have a podcast waiting for me that had an interview with a successful entrepreneur. It didn't exist. So I said, well, if I want it, maybe some other people do as well. So I launched Entrepreneurs on Fire on that premise to be the first daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. And guess what, Melanie? The day that I launched, it was the best 
daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. It was the worst daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. It was the only daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. That's the niche. That's how I dominated it. That's how I won. I wedged myself in. And then I've expanded now, as you see me today, 10 years later, into a media empire that's generating millions of dollars a year. I'm doing books, I'm doing courses, I'm speaking, masterminds, this and that. I'm all over the place. And, but people are so scared. Like, I don't want to niche down because there's nobody down there. They can be my audience. And I'm like, for goodness sake, it's your only chance to get your initial momentum and traction. And then you can expand out and conquer the world. But not until you first get that initial momentum and traction. That's the key. Don't resist the niche. <laughs> it's the like niches <laughs> have all the riches. That's right. I'm sure we could come up with several slogans around that, right? <laughs> you need a fire. You need one with fire in it. <laughs> we need to keep saying idea and niches over and over again. There you go. You know, so you've got 17 steps in this roadmap. And by the way, I am 100% in agreement with the niching. And I, I see people avoid it. They resist it. They're afraid of it, just like you said. And the minute they accept it and then really dominate the niche. And I think that's what you did with that daily podcast. Like you dominate. dominated that niche. Because there's no competition. How can I not dominate? Again, exactly. I was the best. I was the worst. I was the only. Yes. Until you weren't. But you still had built that momentum and we're in the lead. And I think that's what people miss here. But now I'm curious, was that your favorite step in the roadmap? Or do you have another step in that 17 steps that you think is like a game changer? This book is 71,000 words, 273 pages. The average chapter is 3,550 words. Step seven, chapter seven, 13,000. 500 words. That chapter alone could be a business book. It is a beast of a chapter. And I'll tell you, it is such a critical step in the 17th step roadmap. Designing your content production plan. It is the reason, absolutely, without a doubt, why Entrepreneurs on Fire has turned into the media empire it is. We have a fantastic content production plan. It used to be terrible. Now it's fantastic. A decade later, almost every single person who's listening or hearing this right now, you have a terrible content production plan. Take my word for it. I'm telling you the truth. You need to hear it. It's terrible. And it's the reason you're far underperforming what you can and should be performing at right now. But no fear, 13,500 words later, you'll actually know what a fantastic content production plan looks like. And for the first time in your life, you'll be able to have one. You'll be able to implement it yourself. You'll be able to, to design your content production plan and it will blow your mind and it will change your life forever. I love that. Getting Having a plan, clear action that you take is a game changer. And being able to apply it to your content, stellar. It's I'm, I'm Most excited people to read that. that. Nobody does it. Yes. They're not willing to take the time to organize their thoughts and their their actions at, at that level of minute detail. And But it is a total game changer. Next time. Yeah. Total totally game agree. changer. And it's a commitment up front to, to a time commitment, to a mental bandwidth commitment. But the time it saves, like in the years to come, it's the reason why I only work five days per month. is <laughs> because my content production plan is that good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think it's a game changer too. I have so many things I want to ask you, but you mentioned something earlier and I want to come back to it because I think it's, again, one of the things that has set you apart in our industry. And I have admired it, John, ever since I saw you uh, starting to operate like this, this ultimate complete transparency about your earnings, about your process, about your motivation. And, and when you started publishing your your uh, earning reports, I was like, that's freaking awesome. I'm kind of curious, you know, what do you think being transparent like that has done for you on this common path to uncommon success? Because it's certainly not common to do that. 
So back in 2012, I was looking around the entrepreneurial world, like thinking, where could I fit in here? Like, what could I possibly do? And at the same time, I was like, can you even like genuinely make money on the internet not being a slimy scam ball? I just didn't know. I, I mean, I came from the army. I didn't, I just was a traditional back. I just didn't know if it could be done. I was really searching for answers. And I came across this guy, Pat Flynn, Smart Passive Income, and he was publishing monthly income reports. And I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. This is so inspiring. This is a good guy, a family guy who's just showing that it can be done and, and how he does it. And this is really cool. And I remember just making a pledge in that moment saying, if I ever find a way to make money online as an online entrepreneur in whatever capacity that is, I'm also going to share with my audience that kind of transparency, that kind of hope, that kind of inspiration, that kind of guidance. And so when we started generating revenue and significant revenue, we started publishing monthly income reports. And I bring my lawyer in to share a legal tip. We bring our accountant in to share a tax tip. Like we try to make them super valuable, like just overall value bomb posts to be super helpful. And we release them as, an, as a podcast income report as well to talk about it. And, you know, it's, it's, our, it's our most visited site on our entire uh, blog. I mean, people wow. really get a lot of value out of seeing how we make money, where we make our money, where we put our efforts in, where do we spend our money, what you know tools are we using? Everything's there. Every every penny is accounted for. You know, Kate's the machine behind that, and she's published, and we've published, you know, now ninety one consecutive monthly income reports. Wow, and, and it doesn't stop at your earnings report. I mean, we don't have to deep dive into this, but I just I really want to acknowledge this, and and for our, the Amplify community that's listening in today, like you know, John has been transparent about almost everything. Like I've seen you post on Facebook about, you know, bullies and online trolls that have attacked yeah. you. And, and, um, you know, you've talked love about the I failures. I get to I share this troll. <laughs> Lovely. Exactly. I shall Thank expose you. You. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, that's, that takes some balls to be willing to talk about the failures and all of the, the, the junk as well as the successes and, I think as we look at uncommon success, but common paths, like I would love for us to flip our worldview from these things being common instead of uncommon. And so again, I think you're a way shower there. I like that word way shower. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Yeah. Those that's, that's the trailblazer. You know, mm. we, you, you, part of your big idea that maybe you don't even realize is that you are taking a path of exposing how, what real entrepreneurship is instead of the illusion that so many people build up. And that's what makes you the amazing leader in our industry that you are. Like when I was in the army, I always so admired the commanding officers above me, you know, who were there, who were working out with us, who are training with us, who are showing us the way that, you know, who are sharing with us their faults as well as their successes, you know, their experiences. And on the flip side, I always, you know, frankly had no respect for the commanding officers in my chain of command who were the opposite, you know, who are non-existent, who are guarded, who are always trying to, you know, pretend that they were perfect. And I always, you know, kind of dedicated myself to kind of following that first model of just, you know, listen, I want to be a leader. I want to show the way. And part of being a leader is just being open and honest about both sides of the equation, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And just opening up the kimono and showing what, what's working, what's not. And hopefully you can emulate our successes and hopefully you can avoid our failures. Like that's the goal of my business. Hmm. Well, I think now is a perfect time to remind everybody you want to get John's book right now, go to <laughs> uncommonsuccessbook.com. And, you know, you're in pre-order right now as this episode's going to air, but I know once it goes uh, to full uh, publication, I don't know if your special bonuses will still be there, but maybe just share yeah. with everybody a little incentive to get the book now. <laughs> don't wait until March 23rd. Um, if you listen to this after March 23rd, you're awesome. Just go buy the book. You'll love it. If it's before March 23rd, don't hesitate because we have five insane pre-order bonuses. Uh, just one of the bonuses, by the way, we are literally gifting you all three of our journals, the podcast journal, the mastery journal, and the Freedom Journal, just making this an absolute no-brainer. Um, right now, we're actually shipping all three um, to your door if you're in the United States. 
Um, if you're outside, we're giving you immediate access to the digital versions, which are beautiful digital packs. Um, if we are pulling pulling that physical journal offer, though, because we've had it open since January 1st, and thousands and thousands of journals have we shipped happily because they're they're fantastic journals, but we are pulling that incentive soon. So don't hesitate. You want to head over to uncommonsuccessbook.com. You'll see endorsements there from Seth Godin, Gary Vaynerchuk, um, Eric Amandi, Dory Clark, Neil Patel. You'll see the first chapter of the book for free, which you can consume at your leisure. You'll see all five bonuses listed. That was just one of the bonuses was the journals. There's four other amazing bonuses as well. Um, and you'll see a video of me jumping in my pool here in Puerto Rico um, and then toweling off really quickly and uh, <laughs> describing more details about the book, UncommonSuccessBook.com. Awesome. So John, uh, I got a couple of questions to ask you before we wrap up. I like to take ourselves back in time and find out, first of all, what do you think is the boldest move that you had to make to get where you are today? I hired a mentor to um, mentor my podcast launch, Jamie Masters of The Eventual Millionaire. I hired a accountability leader, Cliff Ravenscraft. To, he had a podcast mastermind that I joined. And they were the leaders in the podcasting space. And they both unequivocally, with no shadow of a doubt, said, do not launch a daily podcast. It will fail. You'll get burned out. You won't find enough guests. You'll get your guests will get burned out. It will fail. Don't do it. And I had to stare down the industry giants and just say, hey, my vision is a daily podcast and I'm sticking to it. And it was a bold move. But to be honest with you, I don't know if you're in the Enneagram world at all, but uh, I'm an eight. I'm a challenger. So uh, I like to challenge authority. Always have. That's why. I wasn't a life from the military. That wasn't going to quite work out very well. And also I did come to this like click realization that, wait a second, if the best people in the industry right now tell me that it can't be done and I, and I figure out a way to do it, think about that. Like that's opportunity. And that was bold. That was bold. I love that you shared that one too, because doing what is the opposite of the trend or what your mentors are saying and knowing it every fiber of your being, I have to do it this way. I feel called to do it this way. And standing behind that, that is what leaders do that propel them. Now, of course, you got to follow through, right? <laughs> and if, you, if it hadn't worked, you know, you would have pivoted, I'm sure. But wow, what a great example of a bold move. Okay. Second question, John, looking back, in your trajectory 10 years ago to now, what is one thing you wish you would have done sooner that you know would have helped you maybe help more people or get more of what you wanted out of your business? I wish I would have written a book sooner. You know, I waited a long time to write a traditionally published book and it's been a fantastic process. It's been one of the most challenging things I've ever done. And I'm a big believer that all the magic happens outside of your comfort zone. And so many people just, you know, find themselves living way too long in their comfort zone. And, and this was something that got me outside of my comfort zone. So I'm, I'm super proud of it. You know, I, I didn't know how hard it was going to be or how just satisfying it was going to be. And had I known, I would have done it sooner. I love that. I, I'm, I'm kind of joining you on that one. I've been dragging Ooh. my feet too. <laughs> So you're my inspiration today, John. Do Get it. my button gear. <laughs> Do it. I've got an amazing agent for you. Oh, good. I will be reaching out. John, thanks so much for joining us. I am so excited to uh, get the book myself and read the whole thing. And just congratulations on so many big achievements and getting the book out of you and out into the market. I know how much you put into that. Thanks, Melanie. I really enjoyed chatting with you today. It was a pleasant conversation. I hope your audience enjoyed. Oh, they will. And I'm sure as you're listening in, you're going to have some big ahas. Make sure you join us in the Amplify Your Authority Facebook group. I'm going to be starting a dialogue there. And again, reinforcing the principles that John is sharing in this book. So get the book and let's talk about it in the group. Thanks for tuning in today, Amplifier. Be sure to join us right now in the Amplify Your Authority community at authorityamplifiers.com and I'll share my seven proven tips to be a highly paid expert that stands out in a crowded market. 
Plus, we're going to keep this conversation going. And I want to hear from you how you're going to amplify your authority and make a greater impact. Before you go, please take a minute to give our show and our guests some love over on your favorite podcasting platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. Leave your full name and I'll spotlight you and your authority on social media. 